This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is yet another Thursday night when you ca we come to your home with the good news that Jesus is alive and well. We come to you bringing you the ever-living, powerful word of God. The word that never changes, but the word that but it has the ability to change your situation. The word of God has the ability to change your battles, to turn your battles into rejoicing. And my prayer for you tonight is that there will be a turning around in your situation that you will forever live to remember. That you will remember what the Lord has done for you this night as a result of your receiving his word. Remember, anyone who received the word of God and acted on that word got result. So as you receive the word, act on that word. Believe this word and your situation will change. You and I know that we are living in very, very hard times, difficult times. You go to the shops or to the supermarket and you want to buy the things that you have always been buying with the same amount of money that you have been spending. And you take just the small sizes, you take the small sizes. But once you get to the counter and you are, they give, you are given the total, you think the machine is wrong. You think something has gone wrong and you are wondering now what do I return? Because everything, everything is rising except the salary and the things that are so, 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 so hard and uh, the, the people concerned are thinking about politics and politics alone. But we, we can lift up our eyes to God because we know our help does not come from the east it doesn't come from the west. It doesn't come from up the mountains. It doesn't come from the valleys. But our help comes from God. In times like this, this is when you lift up your eyes unto God. You look at the word. You listen to the word. You obey the word. You do what the word tells you to do. And you will find change. Remember, Isaac planted during the famine because he was told by God. But during this time, what I need, what I, God has put in me is to give you a word of encouragement and tell you, although the situation is hard, although the times are hard, God has not changed. It is not for a long time. There, it's going to be over. This also will come to pass. This also is not permanent. It will pass away. Therefore, keep holding. That's why Paul writes to the Corinthians and he tells them in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 58. Therefore, my bre beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want to say to you, my friend, be steady first. Be unmovable. We may change. Maybe we may have to change the lifestyle. Maybe you may take a little bit less sugar than you have been taking. You may even be forced to eat ugali with salt. Whatever the case, be unmovable. Be steady first. Because your salvation is nearer than when we believed. Your, your deliverance is just at the corner. I rem, when I talk about the corner, I remember this time I was looking for a, for a piece of land in Akuru to build uh, the church. And I kept on going to the, count, uh, to, the, to the commissioner of lands. And I would stand on Sunday and tell the people, our land is right at the corner. Our land is right at the corner. It's getting closer. And one day one brother asked me, uh, Pastor, you are, you are always telling us the la that the land is at the corner. How big is this corner? I pray that your corner may not be a big one. I pray that yours will be a small corner. It's not a large corner. Because your deliverance is right at the corner. Tonight could be the night that will bring transformation in your life. Remember, everything, every change starts with your thinking. When you allow your thinking to change, your perspective changes. The way you look at things changes. 
then your life is going to be different. Now, let's get to where we stopped last, last, when, the last Thursday. Last Thursday, we, we were looking at the assignment that you have been given an assignment just as Joshua was given an assignment. Joshua was told, Joshua was told, Joshua, you have got to, you have got to arise. It is your time now. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan. You and this people, you will bring this people to the other side. So therefore, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And we have looked at this scripture and concluded, for you to succeed in your assignment, you have got to be strong. My friend, you have got to be strong. And when I talk of strength, I'm not talking of the mus mus muscle strength, the strength of your biceps and triceps. No, 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 no. I am talking of being steady fast in the Lord, being strong in the word of God, holding fast your confession, holding fast to the word of God, knowing that God is on your side. Knowing that he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Knowing that he has said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Knowing that he has said, there is nothing that is too hard for me. Knowing that he has said, I am the Lord, you are God, I change not. I come to speak to somebody tonight who is going through some hard times. Somebody with questions from your children, from your relatives, from your spouses, which you cannot answer. I come to speak to you, my friend, that Jehovah has not forgotten you. He is right here with you, right there where you are. He is with you. So you've got to be strong and you have got to be courageous. Number three, we said you must have the right attitude. You have got to have the right attitude. And we took some time to look at attitude. Number one, we asked ourselves, what is attitude? What is an attitude, having an attitude? Or what is this attitude? What, how, how, where does it come from? And we did see that an attitude is an inward feeling. An attitude is an inward feeling that is expressed by behavior, expressed by your behavior. So you can look at the way you behave and the way you react to things and you can know what kind of an attitude you have. Whether you have a negative attitude or a positive attitude. When you possess a negative attitude, there is no progress. It is, an, it is an attitude of it is impossible. It is not doable. I am finished. I have come to the end of the road. Nobody knows me. Nobody thinks about me. I didn't spend much time in school. I don't know this language. I cannot speak well. I, I, all those excuses bring in a negative attitude. When you live in a negative attitude, your life stagnates. And I came to say to you, my friend, that by the, uh, by the communion tonight, your stagnation has got to crumble down. That stagnation that has been holding you has got to crumble down. You need to have the right attitude. I gave you the results of scientific researches that have been done. I gave you the, res uh, the, 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 the result of scientific res res uh, researches that have been done. And we did see that 68% of the people who quit their jobs quit because they develop an attitude. They develop an attitude about their job, about someone in the, in the place of work, or about the transportation, or about the boss. They develop a negative attitude, and that attitude keeps eating them up. My friend, I come to you. Is there a negative attitude that has been eating you up? 
Maybe your attitude is from where you grew up. Me, I grew up in such and such a place. What good can come out of such and such a place? Or me, I, didn't, I, I, I am a form four dropout. Or I am a class three dropout. Or I didn't even go to school. Or my father ran away and did not educate us. Whatever, whatever your history is, you should not allow your history to influence your attitude. And I told you about several people who developed the right attitude. Now, when you look at Naaman, Naaman started with the wrong attitude. He started with the wrong attitude. When Naaman went to Israel, number one, he went to the king. And the king was wroth. So the king sent him to the prophet. And, and Naaman was already angry. Why would, they, why would the king send me, send me to a prophet? Why would he do that? He felt being degraded. He had the wrong attitude. But thank God for the company that he kept. Thank God for the people that he went with. And then even to make it worse, when he went to the prophet, and the prophet got what Naaman wanted, the prophet did not even talk to him. He sent somebody, you go and tell him to dip himself seven times, seven times into the river Jordan. Oh man, Naaman is wondering, what is going on? I am being demeaned, degraded, dishonored, disrespected. Did you know some of those things come to you because of your attitude? Because of the way you are looking at other people and the way you look at yourself. So Naaman was wroth and he decided, they look up, not going to do that. I'm going home. Wadi dala, avi, whatever the, whatever the grammar. He said, I'm not, I'm not, why, how can they treat me like this? How can they do this to me? Maybe you have been asking yourself that, that question. It is because of the attitude that you have developed. The attitude you have developed will control your life. So Naaman was wroth. The Bible says he went away and he said, I thought, I thought, I thought he will surely come to me. That the prophet will come to me and stand and call the name of his law, of the Lord, his God. And strike his hand on, on, over the place and recover my, my leprosy and bring healing to me. After all, we have better rivers where I come from. We have Abana, we have Pafa, all in, the, in Damascus. There are better rivers. Why could he tell me even to go and wash there? He's telling me to go in the Jordan. And the Jordan has muddy waters. Adagi, Okivi, Adagi, Istaki, Siendi, Nini, Potere, Ambari, Wacha, Kufa, Potea. That was his attitude. But thank God that Naaman had some good company. Why am I bringing this issue of company? Because the people you work with, the company you work with, will influence your attitude. The company you keep, you keep will influence your attitude. Naaman had a negative attitude, but the people he was with told him, Sir, Afandi, if he had told you to do a big thing, she would have done it. This is just go, dipping yourself in the river. If he had told you to do a mighty big thing, see, you would have done it. And Naaman says, yes, I would have done it. Now, this is just a small thing, waiting on the Lord, praying, calling upon the Lord, believing the word of Bishop Mark, accepting the word, declaring the word, speaking the word, changing your way of thinking, a small thing which you can do. My friend, it is doable. Going back to the beginning, speaking to your situation, speaking to your business, speaking to your shop, that which you are doing has ears. Speak to it. It is so simple that it is easy for people with negative attitudes to ignore it. But thank God that Naman 
Listen to the people he was with. My friend, that's why I've come to your home. That's why I'm speaking to you tonight. That you may listen to the word of the Lord. That you may capture this word. That you may allow change to come. You may take a step in your situation. Right in that predicament, you take a position and say, this one is going to change. This situation is not going to finish me. This sickness is not going to eat me up. I refuse. I refuse. I was, I, I, was, I, was, I was talking with one of my pastors yesterday and my pastor told me how she was, uh, uh, somebody called her and told her, I want, I want you to know that I am dying and I, I'm calling you to ask you that when I die, you come and do my funeral. Come and do my funeral when I die. And the pastor knew this one needs a shocker and said, okay, what you need to do is uh, allow me. You have got to allow me. Oh, by the way, when do you want to die? So that I can start preparing myself. And this person was shocked. She was sick in bed. She sat in bed. When do you want, when do you want to die? So that I can start preparing my sermon. Number two, I want you to allow me to tell the, to tell the people on, your, on the day of your burial that you died because you are a fool. Or you died, you, you chose to die instead of fighting on or, some, or something to that effect. And she, this lady rose up and said, I am not dying. I pray that somebody will rise up as a result of this word and say, I am not dying. I shall live to declare the goodness of the Lord. I am not going to die out of these hard times. I'm not going down because of these hard times. I will arise like Isaac arose during the hard times. I will arise. So what happened to Naaman? Naaman went and accepted what the people told him. He said, okay, since you are insisting. In other words, attitude is changeable. That negative attitude that you have is not permanent. It is only there because you have been keeping the wrong company. My friend, be my friend. You keep this company. This company will give you the word of the Lord. This company will tell you it is possible. It's doable. Don't give up. You are not a failure. There is hope for you, sir. There is hope for you, madam. Don't give up. This is what this company will tell you. Some other company will tell you, you will never make it. Your education cannot help you. Your uncle cannot help you. Your father is dead. Your, uh, your, your, your brothers don't like you. They will tell you every negative thing. But I want to say to you that when you keep this company, you will hear the word of the Lord and your situation will change. That's why I tell people at our church, at the Majestic City, at the house of bread, I tell them, if you stay in this church for six months and your life has not changed, look for another church. You have permission to look for another church. Why? Because if you keep company with me and you listen to the word of God, I guarantee you, in less than three months, your life will be different. Your life will be different. Naaman had the right company. He listened to them. He said, okay. So he went into the Jordan. And Chubudu, first time, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. He may have rose, risen up and told the people, look, nothing has happened. And they said, no, go, Nam and go. Go, Nam and go. Go, Nam and go. Go, and they may have started saying, go, Nam and go. Go, Nam and go. Nam and went a second time. Nothing. He went a fourth time. Nothing. He went the sixth time. Nothing. He may have said, Oh, oh God, eh, koima. let me go this last one. Trouble you? By the time he came out, he was completely clean of his leprosy. Why? His attitude had changed. My friend, tonight, by changing your attitude, you can change your situation. So we learn or we discover that attitude is developed. An attitude can be influenced. It is influenced by the people around you. It is influenced by the company that you keep. So you can change your attitude by changing your company. 
You can change your attitude by changing your friends. There are some friends you call friends, but they are not friends. If they are always putting you down, why do you want to listen to them? Why do you want to go to somebody who calls themselves a friend to you and all they will tell you is you will never make it. You will never be anything. You will never succeed. You, are, you don't have a business hand. You don't have a business eye. You don't have this. You don't do this. You, why do you want to keep there? Turn around. I don't want your friendship. And look for a better friendship that will cause you to rise up. So that you are not part of the 68% that will quit their jobs because of an attitude. Now, attitude is developed. So I come to you to say to you, you can develop the right attitude if you keep the right company. We have looked at Naaman. Last time we looked at David, the shepherd boy. As he approached Goliath, he had the right attitude. Goliath was fully armed. He was covered from head to the toe, completely armed, com uh, armored. He had his armor on him. David was not armored. He had nothing but a sling and some five stones. He put four into his pocket and looked at the giant and said, this one I can finish. My friend, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Look at that giant. Look at that giant that has been telling you you can't pass here. You can't go beyond this point. You cannot succeed in this. You are finished. Look at that giant. Whether it is called Shylock or whether it is called... Uh, Copper, uh, Copper, the Simu, or whatever it is called. Whether it is called uh, uh, lack, lack of this, lack of education, look at that giant and tell that giant, I have a God who is greater than all giants. I have a God who has kept a covenant with me. My God is a covenant keeping God. And tell that situation, you are going to change. You must bow now. You must change now. Because I have the anointing for change. My friend, I came to say to you, you are no longer that village girl that they knew. You are no longer that village boy they thought was a moron. You are not that village imze that they thought has nothing. You are not that village woman that they thought can do nothing. The anointing of God is upon you. The power of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon you. That's why you are listening to me tonight. If it was not upon you, you would not be listening to me. You would be listening to other people. But you are listening to me so that I can look at you in the eye. And point a finger at you and tell you, you are not who your villagers said you are. You are a child of God. You are a son of a king. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Oh, my friend, rise up and stop complaining and develop the right attitude. Look at that giant and declare to that giant, I will feed your carcasses to the birds of the air tonight. Today, today, today. Now, 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 now. Kawo, no. I am going to finish you in the name of Jesus Christ. For God is on your side. David had the right attitude. Because of the right, having the right attitude, he was able to bring the giant down. He brought the giant down because he had the right attitude. What right attitude? With God, all things are possible. With God on my side, I can bring down a giant. With God on my side, I have brought down a bear. With God on my side, I brought down a lion. With God on my side, I will bring down this giant. And he talked to the giant. Remember, that inward feeling 
that inward feeling expressed by behavior, expressed by your behavior, will bring you the victory. And your behavior will influence your words. As a man thinketh in his heart, thus he is. So, feed yourself with the word of God. Feed yourself with the word of God. When you feed yourself with the word of God, you will speak the word of God. You will speak the word of God. And the word will work for you. David had the right attitude. Even when, after he had been anointed king, and Saul is looking for him. Saul wants to destroy him. Because Saul has seen this boy is anointed. I want you to know, the moment the people see your charisma, see your gifting, they want to bring it down. They want to tell you you cannot make it. They want to tell you you can never succeed. Where they tell you you cannot succeed, that is the place. That is when you know, ha ha, I am wired for this. This is where my victory is. Where you find opposition, that's where your victory is. After all, David declares in Psalms 23 and says, Thou preparest a table. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my own enemies. Oh man, what should that tell me? That tells me that I should be looking for where my enemies is, where my enemies are, if I want to know where the Lord has prepared a table for me. My friend, God has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. You know, God has a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. He would have put, prepared the table and put a signboard, banqueting table, banqueting table, so that you can, you can know where your table is. But instead of putting a banqueting table, God put the enemy. He said, enemies, opposition, accusation, frustration, fight, all that. He put it there. So that when you see it, instead of seeing the frustration, you see beyond it and you see the table that has been prepared for you. My friend, are you seeing your table? This season is for you to see your table. He says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my own enemies. So you, are, you should use your enemies to identify where your table is, has been laid. Let's go back to David again. David, Saul is looking for David. He wants to kill him. David runs away. He is living in caves. Uh, and a moment comes when he is actually surrounded actually surrounded by soul soldiers, and things are so bad. It is at that time when even food to, drink, to eat is not there. He has got to pretend to be a madman so that he can escape from Saul. And when he's taken to Saul as a captive, he pretends to be a madman, even from a distance. And Saul is annoyed with his guys, and he tells them, why do you bring a madman to me? Why do you bring a madman to me? I don't want a madman in my house. David declares when he is surrounded in Psalm 34 and verse number 1. Look at David's attitude. He is in, the, in a situation where he should be blaming his people. He should be complaining. He should be blaming God. He should be blaming everybody. But what does David say? In Psalm 34 and verse number 1, he declares, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh man, that word alone is enough for you to receive and you go to bed. You go and sleep with that word. That in spite of your situation, surrounded by so many difficulties, you can declare and say, I will bless the Lord 
at all times. Somebody says you cannot bless the Lord. I want you to know, it is the Bible that says, I will bless the Lord. In other words, I will praise him. I will exalt him. I will magnify his name. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I came to talk to you, my friend. Somebody listening to me. May the praises of the Lord be in your mouth from tonight. May the praises of the Lord be with you wherever you go. May you receive the attitude of praise, the attitude of worship, and declare with David, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The communion tonight is to trigger, is to jumpstart praise in your life. The communion tonight is to start up the right attitude within you that you may start praising God in your predicament like Paul and Cyrus in the Philippian jail. Instead of complaining, they had the right attitude. They praised God in jail at midnight and God appeared. May the Lord appear in your situation. May the Lord appear as you partake of the communion tonight. May the Lord appear as you bless him tonight. As you praise him tonight, may he appear in your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will rise up tomorrow morning that you will wake up the next day a new person having been touched by God. Your situation having been turned around for we serve a miracle working God. For this to happen, you need to have a relationship with God. You need to have a relationship with God. Let me ask you, my friend, are you born again? Are you a believer? Are you a Christian? Are you a committed Christian? Are you a serious Christian? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? This is the beginning point of change and transformation in your life. Knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I know many of you who have been listening to me, you are born again. You know Jesus. Thank you. And congratulations. I'm coming to you. But there is one person. There is one more person. There is somebody listening to me. You do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have been struggling. And you don't know what to do. God brought you today, tonight. That you may capture this word. Because this is the beginning point. This is where you begin change in your life. Please, may you open up your spirit for Jesus to come in and he will lead you that you may start developing the right attitude. Let me, allow me to pray with you. Please, whatever you are, allow me to pray with you. Those of you in your homes or in your car or wherever in your office, please pray with me right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you. I acknowledge that the work done at the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ was for me. And right now, willingly, out of my own accord, I open up my spirit that you may come in and make me your habitation. I receive you this moment as my Lord and my Savior. Because I pray in Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord richly bless you. That is the prayer I made, the prayer you have made, and by that prayer, your, book has, your name has been written in the book of life. So you are a child of God. 
Now you qualify to partake of the communion. And as you partake of the communion, your attitude starts changing. You are no longer a vagabond. You are no longer a, fa a, a bastard. You are no longer a, fam a fatherless individual. Now you belong to the family of God. You are a child of God. You are a son of God. The Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. May the Lord richly bless you. Please, make sure you tell somebody you are born again, you have given your life to Jesus, and you are a child of God. Write to me, send me a text, and tell me what has happened into your life. Those demons that have been chasing you and tormenting you, you will never see them again. By the prayer that you have made, that, makes it, that becomes the end of that situation in the name of of Jesus Christ. I want us to partake of the communion. I trusting that you are ready with your family or yourself, wherever you are, let us partake of the communion. And I want to read from uh, the writings of Paul as he writes to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat, as you, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ. I thank you for the blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary. Lord, let the effect of the broken body and the shed blood be experienced by every individual who is listening to me this moment. That, Lord, the effect of the broken body shall be manifested in their bodies. That the effects of the blood that was shed shall be manifested in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ and to your own glory. Because I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 As we partake of the communion, we remember the Lord's death and resurrection ascension into heaven and the promise that he is coming again this will help us to be steady fast it will help us to be immovable it will help us to always abound in the work of the lord it will help us know that our labor in the lord is not in vain let us partake of the bread Let us partake of the cup. Father, I thank you and I bless you for this view. Thank you that we have partaken of the broken body of Jesus and the blood that was shed. May this work in the life of every individual that is hearing me tonight. I pray that as they call upon your name, that you will help this individual change their attitude, develop a positive attitude, develop an attitude of victory, an attitude of favor, an attitude of wisdom, an attitude filled with your grace, that they may know that in all these things we are more than conquerors. I take authority over that difficult situation, over that sickness and disease that has been eating this individual. I command it to die from the root in the name of of Jesus Christ and I command the healing power of God to flow in your body 
from the top of your head to the sole of the feet. Receive your healing right now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend. Please write to me and send me a text message or tell somebody what has happened because I know in my Noah there are people who's, who have received their healing right now. Your miracle has already taken place in Jesus' name. Receive the boldness to testify. Declare, I have received my miracle. My situation has changed. I have the right attitude. The attitude, the attitude of blessing the Lord at all times. My days of complaining and murmuring are over. I am now a new creature. God bless you. I love you and I value you. Tell us what is going on in Jesus' name. Now, it is always important to know that worship is not complete until we place the offering, the sacrifice on the altar. This altar feeds you. This altar has life. This altar brings joy to you. This altar brings hope to you. This altar brings healing to you. This altar fights your battles. It is your responsibility to make sure that the fire upon this altar does not go out. That the fire upon this altar is not put off. This we do by our offerings and our sacrifice. And I want to encourage you tonight to bring in, send in your offerings, send in your sacrifice. Use, you can use our m -Pesa pay bill number, which is right on the screen. When they ask for the account, you can put there, it is offering, sacrifice, it is tithe, it is whatever, whatever it is, just put it there. Then send me the confirmation so I can get back to you. Or you can use you can do a direct bank transfer from your bank account to the church account. Our church account is in Equity Bank. So you can do that direct transfer and send me the confirmation message. Or you can use the Equity Bank M-Pesa pay bill number 247247. And the account, our account number for the church is on the screen. Please send it there, send me the confirmation. Or you can write a check payable to Deliverance Church, LCCI, or Deliverance Church, Majestic City. You send it, we will receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord prosper you. May you find evidence that something has taken place in your life. This Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday we meet in two locations. We meet in two locations at the House of Bread, situated at the KPCU building on Helsarasi Avenue, next to the wholesale market, Marigiti. There is a green gate, Enna coaches. You go past the Enna coaches, we are on the, on the second floor you will find us there from 8 in the morning. 7.30, we start with corporate prayer. Everybody praying. And then 8 on the dot, the service starts. Powerful service, powerful worship. And then our second service starts at 10.30 in the same place. And I want to welcome you, my friend. Our second location is at the Majestic City along Kangudo Road at the Makongeni stage. That's where you will find a, a white tent on your, on your right. And you will see Majestic City Church. The Majestic City Church. That is where we are. And our service there starts at 10.30. 10.30, powerful service, powerful worship, powerful word, powerful results. Your life will never be the same again. I love you and I value you. My name is Bishop Mark Karaoke. You are pastor and your friend for a long time. May the Lord richly bless you. Have a super, super, super week. God bless you.